So Mattis says well, it was all widely viewed as the responsible adult of the Trump team. And up until he uh, had to resign over the president's uh, policy tweet on Syria, he commanded utmost respect from the president. So with Pat Shanahan, a uh, longtime Boeing exec uh, that never wore the uniform that seems to impress the president, do, do you expect him to have any meaningful influence on U.S. foreign policy? So it all depends on how, how long he's uh, able to stay in, in that position. Shanahan was lar largely seen as the behind-the-scenes guy, the guy running the bureaucracy and managing the Pentagon, and now he's sitting next to the president in, in cabinet meetings, and people are uh, focusing on him, saying, you know, trying to figure out you know, who he is and look at every one of his mannerisms uh, as the president speaks. He'll have a big test coming up in, in, in this audition, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because the Pentagon's getting ready to send its 2020 budget proposal to Capitol Hill, uh, along with the rest of the federal budget in the coming month or so. Mm -hmm. And Patrick Shanahan's going to have to, in this acting secretary role, go to the Hill and actually sit in front of a uh, Democrat-controlled uh, House and a, a Republican-controlled Senate and me members uh, asking tough questions. So. You can, you can expect a lot of people will be watching, and you could expect the president will be watching that as well. Absolutely, especially on Fox News. <laughs> uh, moving it over to Leo. So um, are you seeing any attempts by leaders from both parties to reach out and, uh, on, and for compromise, not only on the border security issue, but on issues that are very much um, of interest here in Israel, such as U.S. aid to Israel? Uh, do you expect to cooperation, or is this gridlock and parochial partisanship uh, going to be the new normal in the 116th Congress? Yeah, it's, it's hard to tell right now because we're in the middle of this shutdown that, that's held over from the last uh, session of Congress. So, yeah. so it is gridlock right now. As a matter of fact, you, you brought up the, the issue of uh, Israeli defense aid. There was a bill that came up in the Senate this week that got blocked not on its merits, but because the shutdown issue hasn't been resolved. And Senate Democrats said, we're not going to vote on anything until, uh, until we, we uh, reopen the government. So, mm -hmm. so we're starting to see routine business or non-controversial business start to get sidelined over this. If there is a solution that comes up in the next few days, weeks to the shutdown, you know, things will start to reset and we'll see. Is this a, is this a long term, just everything becomes a fight or is this something where there can be common ground? Hmm. Uh, you know, Marcus mentioned the defense budget uh, and Patrick Shanahan coming up to the Hill. It's going to be very interesting to see. We've heard criticism on the Democratic side about Pentagon waste and ways they think that things can be uh, better spent, some efficiencies. Um, but we've also heard that from Republicans, and mm -hmm. it wouldn't surprise me to see some some really tough questioning from both parties there of of the acting uh, defense secretary. Uh, you know, as they look at what should that budget be and how much confidence do they have in Shanahan? You know, post Mattis. Precisely. Uh, moving it back to Marcus. So. Um, uh, Shanahan and uh, Eric Chewing, his new chief of staff, uh, have spent careers promoting U.S. industry. And Norquist, as you mentioned, is a financial management guy. Um, maybe that's what the Trump White House really wants. They want to leave foreign policy making to the White House and let the Pentagon promote arms sales and uh, cut fat out of the budget. So, so, so no doubt the Pentagon's coming off actually a year of uh, record highs in fo and foreign military sales. And as you mentioned, the, the individuals who are in the seats right now, that's where their expertise is. So, you know, you would expect them to, to actually focus on that. Now, the wild card is always, always the president right. uh, and what he might do or what he might, might tweet. Uh, President Trump believes in having a, a large, powerful military that's w ready and well-funded, but he doesn't believe in actually in, in deploying them unless it's actually necessary. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll likely be a, a, t a test for these new leaders uh, if they're still in the seats. There'll be mm -hmm. some sort of uh, event that, that happens globally where they're going to be forced to uh, to talk, as as Mattis was throughout uh, his tenure and. Their answers will be telling and how uh, they proceed. You have any idea how much the defense budget is, uh, the proposal is going to be? Um, how far beyond the 600 million, 600 billion? 
So, so there's all sorts of numbers being tossed around right now. Uh, uh, Acting Secretary Norquist uh, wouldn't give the top line number. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, and this is this is one of the debates that's gone on internally the, the, within within the White House. Uh, there originally the Pentagon was planning a 733 billion dollar budget. Wow. Then Trump ordered a five percent cut, so it knocked it down to about 700 billion, and then. Uh, lo and behold, after a, a number of people from the Hill and uh, uh, congressional leaders uh, complained, all of a sudden the number 750 was being thrown around. On top of that, there's bu- federal budget caps, which are scheduled to go back into effect th- this year, it's called around here, sometimes known as sequestration. sequestration. So they're—, they're and, and on top of, as Leo mentioned, the, go- the government shut down right now. So prepare for a really, really big budget fight coming up in the, in the upcoming year. And again, a $100 billion delta pretty wow. much between where the budget could end up, between 650 if that wow. sequestration goes into effect and 750.